Hey guys, this is the revamped 2020 Beta 300 RR and the Italian answer for the trails. Stick around to find out why. Beta rebuilt their entire model year 2020 bikes from the ground up and if you think the brand is trailing behind the other manufacturers, think again. The first 10 hours are in and I'm going to tell you all about the good and bad stuff of the bike. Let's start with the good things. Let's face it, the design of a bike matters and Beta nailed it with this one. What a beauty! Overall, the bike feels well built. When you take the bike apart, you can see a lot of small details that were really thought out to make life easier for the user. The riding position felt seamless to me. I was almost instantly comfortable on the bike. The engine is super torquey and has a huge amount of low end power, most likely thanks to the counterbalancing shaft. And surprisingly, the wet map does make a difference. It honestly doesn't fall behind any other bike, whether it's with a carburetor or injected. If you want to go fast, you won't feel any lack of power, especially on a sunny map. And the fact that the rear of the bike is heavier than the front makes this bike a wheelie machine. Both front forks and rear shock felt really comfortable on the trails and on hard and rural. The suspensions felt plush, but never lacked stability on quicker single tracks or rocky trails. I really felt I could charge any section with confidence. I still have to fiddle with the adjustments to see how the suspensions cope on different riding scenarios, especially on faster riding. One of the strongest assets on this bike are without a doubt the brakes. They are bullet stoppers. These brakes allow you to ride really aggressively and fast with the confidence that the bike will actually stop when you need it to. And I love the braking feel, it's spot on for me. Dual injection has a huge impact on smoke emissions. Sometimes it doesn't even feel like a two-stroke. Let's just hope I don't regret saying that. Dual injection tank is easy to access and well protected at all times. Thankfully, Beta has thought about this and whoever wishes to not have oil injection and just run premix, they can. The toolless air filter cover works really well and the air filter is easy to change. Now for some quick positive notes. The quick release seat works pretty well and has a good fitment given the fact it isn't bolted. All the wiring is quite well made and well organized on the bike. It actually comes with an engine guard. Talk about swimming against the tide. The battery comes with a feature that gives you an estimate of its status, which can be useful for troubleshooting in the middle of the woods. You can manually adjust the valve on the engine, which is useful to tune the power output according to your needs. And I love the black piece over the fuel tank. It's really useful to put some bolts or tools while you're working on the bike. Obviously, all bikes have downsides. Some of them on a broader spectrum, and other ones can be seen as knit and picks. Regarding the engine, it tends to heat up quite a lot, but I still have to fiddle with the carburetor adjustments to see if I can minimize this issue. This problem should be fixed with the installation of a fan. I'll be installing the fan from Boano, so I'll let you know more about it on the long-term review. Something I find ridiculous is the faulty odometer. Before I even got the bike, I already knew this was a known issue and that it could fail fairly on. I didn't expect it to fail 6 hours in. It's super hard to pick up the rear of the bike, even with the fingers shaped on the tail. Your hands slip all the time. The e-start controls are good, but its layout is not great. The starter button is quite easy to press accidentally with your legs if you're stuck in a tight spot, which is something that does not do any good to the electric starter. 
The plastic piece protecting the muffler is made out of the brittlest plastic in the existence of mankind. I broke it the first time I tried to take this piece off the bike. Although Beta decided to include an engine guard, they skipped the handguards. Which is dumb, because this is an enduro bike. This is not only a problem with Beta. Almost all manufacturers decided to walk on this dumb avenue. If you use a trailer for your bike, avoid strapping it to the triple clamps. There is an edge on the triple clamps so sharp that it starts cutting the straps. Strap them on the handlebars instead. I also hate this black piece over the fuel tank because anytime you want to remove the fuel tank you have to also detach the map switch connector and remove a hose, which isn't practical at all. Another downside of this piece is that there's easily a buildup of dirt under it. And to finish the list, meet the most stupid bolt on this bike. That's right, from the 6 bolts securing the top end, 5 of them are perfectly normal 12mm bolts and the 6th has to use a special allen key. Like in every bike out there, there are always some good and bad things, but overall this is a damn good package with a bunch of great features. The 300RR has power in pretty much all the rev range, and combined with its agility and stopping power, you have a great weapon for the trails and single tracks. With some added accessories and some fine tuning, I might also have a great bike for hard enduro. I'm going to find that out. In the next few months, I'll be testing the bike extensively in a broader riding scenarios, and I'll be able to better understand its deepest issues and virtues, from reliability to performance. So don't forget to subscribe if you want to find out more about this Italian stallion. Thank you for watching.